Well, hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the assembly and build of the Skymaster A-10 aircraft. It's been a while since we have had any videos on this aircraft. It's been a while since we've done any progress, but it's time to get back into this aircraft. So hang tight, we'll be back to continue with the assembly of the A-10. All right guys, so I almost forgot where we left off. So next thing we have to do is the tanks. Previous videos, we have gotten the rear part of the fuselage completed. The engines are installed. Uh, everything's dealt with in the back portion of the plane. The wings are complete on this plane, which is a big step. Uh, so we've actually accomplished quite a bit. Now we're just moving forward on this aircraft. So. Before we plug up any more of this fuselage, we need to get these fuel cells figured out. And once we're done these fuel cells, we can join the fuselage pieces together and continue moving forward on this aircraft. So if you guys are not familiar with my other channel, it's called The Lighter Side. And uh, there's a link, I'll put a link down below in the description. Basically, we have been working on a house build for many, many years, and it's finally nearing completion. So roughly when this video comes out, we're probably very close to being homeless, and I know that sounds bad. Uh, we're very close to being homeless, or we're very, we are already homeless. So if you uh, want some fun entertainment, head over to my other channel and check it out. Uh, if you only watch this channel, you will suddenly notice that my videos will start to appear somewhere else and uh, it's not a finished area. So it's going to be an interesting uh, month coming up here on the lighter side and the lighter side of RC, but uh, we will continue with progress on building aircraft wherever we are. Anyways, let's deal with these tanks. Okay, so tanks are pretty straightforward on this aircraft. They basically only really fit in one way. Now you can take these tanks and interchange them so the bung holes are closer to the center. Uh, either way is fine. So they, they fit in the aircraft. That's a successful step number one. All right, step number two, locate the hardware. We've done that. And uh, let's see if we can unwrap this nice and quickly. And through the magic of video editing, our parts are unpackaged. So we've got a few things going on here. Obviously we've got our clunks and our bungs and our lines and all that kind of stuff. Pretty simple uh, fuel system on this plane. You basically have two completely separate fuel systems. So we've got the fuel system for one turbine, the fuel system for the other turbine. Both of the pickups on these tanks go to their own UATs, which will be mounted in the aircraft. And uh, so it's two individual fuel systems, which makes things really, really easy. So that's how we're setting this thing up. And uh, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assemble all the parts, get the tanks made up, and then we're going to check them for leaks. Now, before I do the tanks up, what I like to do is dump some rubbing alcohol in here and uh, I'll use one bottle per tank and basically dump half the bottle in there, shake it up, dump it out, and put the other half in there, shake it up, dump it out. The reason rubbing alcohol is nice because you can just put it in the trash and it'll just evaporate. So uh, you can use fuel, like jet fuel. Problem with that is then you need to find somewhere to put it. So step number one, rinse out the tanks. All right, so we got both tanks plumbed and they are ready to go. So we've inserted them. Um, we have marked them vent fuel, right? So that's the vent line, that's the fuel supply line. And next thing we'll do is, we can do this a couple different ways. You can either pressurize this and leave it sitting overnight, or you can pressurize it and put it under water and then see if it's leaking. Because it's near the end of the evening, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to put a piece of tubing on this. 
uh, that has a crimped end and I'm going to put an open piece of tubing and blow on it with my mouth and we'll just cl clamp it with the forceps here and uh, tomorrow morning if I pull the forceps off and it shoots air out of the uh, the clamped vent line then we know that we have no leaks. So that's how I'm going to check those tanks and I just got the wiring uh, cut for the wing harnesses. So if you remember it's been a couple videos ago now, but we've got our wing connections here. So we've got five air connections and we've got our one uh, ash lock connector, which is all of the servo lines that go on there. So I did eight servo lines, still need to run all the air lines, but that's what all the wiring looks like for the wings. So we've got four going to one side, four going to the other side. All right, so this is what I'm talking about here. So we've got one of these ends that is uh, installed and clamped off right there. And then you've got the other end, which is open. So just remember that if you're putting the open end on your bung line or fuel line, uh, don't let the air blow into your mouth because there's probably residual uh, rubbing alcohol in here and it doesn't taste very good. So all we do is get the forceps ready and blow into this. Don't use a compressor, just use your, your breath. And then we squeeze it off. And tomorrow we'll open that up on both tanks. And if it still has air in it, then we're good to go. Good morning, guys. It's the next morning, obviously. And uh, I can feel that the tanks are still holding pressure. We take the forceps off. And we've got alcohol coming out. And the other one. There we go. So both tanks are good. They both held pressure for at least eight hours and uh, we're good to go on inserting those tanks into the airframe. All right, so while we're focusing on the rear part of this plane, uh, I've temporarily put the tanks in place, haven't put them in there permanently yet. And uh, just doing the tray or the supports here for the tray that we're gonna have sitting in this back section. So on this back section, that's gonna be our air fill valve, our fuel on and offs, things like that. So. What I've done is I've taken some basswood, just these strips here, and I've cut them so they were, when you put them in between the tanks, and I put a support across them like this, they were just a little bit low, okay? So they needed to come up just a little bit, like that. So then I raised it up, put some high saw on there, used my calipers to make sure that they were the same distance on both sides, and then I put a little bit of medium CA on each of the corners there. Use some kicker and glued that in place. So now as the high saw cures, uh, the CA is actually holding it in place. So I'm going to do that on the front section as well. And our little blocks that we got glued in here are perfect. So um, we're kind of working on the equipment tray here or the startup tray and also our wiring harnesses for the wings. That's our next goals to accomplish here. Now I got a couple things to bring up to you guys. Now number one is easy. Um, number one, I need you guys' help with something. So if you haven't seen the video, the A10 that's in this crate right here, that belongs to my buddy Eric. I'll put a screenshot here of the video we did of that flying. So we bought that, we uh, went through it all, we got it set up for him. Uh, it's in the crate, ready to ship back, and we have decided, well, Eric's decided, that uh, he wants to paint that A-10 in the black snake scheme, which is a new scheme. I'll throw a picture up here for the A-10, and I think it's an absolutely phenomenal idea. Really excited to do it. So I've actually reached out to Cali Graphics, in the US and uh, they are working, they actually have the uh, the nomenclature or the decals or decals, sorry, uh, already done up. So uh, those are already ordered and they're on the way. So that's one of the projects in the queue that we have coming up. What I need your help with is the following. So I am looking for the color codes. Now, the reason I'm asking you guys is because I know a few of you guys work around A10s, have worked around A10s in the past, 
and you have some connections out there. So I'm reaching out to you guys to see if you can find the black snake colors for me. Now I know we may not have color codes, but there may be something similar, like if you could send me a, uh, a Benjamin Moore color or whatever, uh, that's going to be very, very helpful. It's a very dark gray and then a flat black. I think the flat black is going to be easy, just flat black. But uh, the dark gray is the color I'm really looking at. From the research I've done, it looks like it's just gray gray. So if you guys know anything about that or have any connections where you can find some stuff out, please let me know. All right, and thing number two. Now this is where it gets a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit weird for me. Um, I've pondered this for a while. People have suggested it to me. My wife has suggested it to me. You guys, some of you viewers and supporters of the channel, supporters of the air, aircraft builds has suggested this to me. So that's why I'm reaching out to you guys in this video to give me your opinion. Comment down below, please. Um, we want to build a new shop at the lighter side of RC. We are currently building a new house. Uh, the airplane side of things is going to take over all four garages. So we've got a four car garage. Uh, we are going to take up all the garages and uh, to move this to the next level, we need to build a shop. So I've already got the shop planned out, uh, 26 by 50, and this is where it comes in. So people have suggested start a GoFundMe and you'd be surprised at your channel supporters how much you could possibly raise to get this shop built. So. Are you guys interested in uh, donating? I have no idea how much it can be, whatever you want, towards the shop. Now, the idea I was kind of thinking about, and I'm open to other ideas, so if you have any suggestions, comment down below, send me an email, please. Um, I want to do a video wall in the new shop, and that video wall is just going to be a nice solid background. And what I was thinking about was maybe everybody who donates we get your guys' name on the wall, uh, something like that. That's kind of the first thing that I thought of. So, weird for me to ask guys, but please give me your opinion down below. All right, so we've got both of the wing harnesses uh, for the wires hooked up. So those are done. Uh, when I was connecting these or laying them out, I was basically looking at the wing, obviously, and making sure that we got the layout correct. Uh, we're marked there to match the wing and we've run all the wires forward so our bundle is getting bigger and each of those is marked as well too for when we actually cut these to length and make them uh, put the servo ends on the end. So that portion wiring from the back end is essentially complete. So this is all of the wires that are going to come from the back end. So what I'm working on now is our tray layout here. So I did cut a piece of the ABS carbon stuff, uh, cut a piece of 332nd ply that's underneath there, maybe you can see it, sort of, and glued those together with the spray glue like we normally do. So now what I'm doing is I'm laying out the startup plate. So we've got our valves which go on our 3D printed uh, on-off valve holders, or SMC slash Festo valve holders. Now those do, even though they're sitting up quite high, there's enough clearance with the hatch when it goes on. I've checked that. And all of this stuff obviously is upside down, but this gives us the general layout. So we've got our on-off valves, our air fill system for the gear and doors, and we've got our air fill system for the brakes and such. So those are the two different air systems we're gonna have and the only other two things we need to put on here is our filler uh, tubes, which are just gonna be um, the yellow Tigon tubing, which will be in this location here. Now because of these tanks uh, being fairly close together, we've got more room in the center than we do sideways. So that's why I've laid out the air this, this, in this manner. Uh, just because there's lots of room in the center. So I think I'm going to put those two fill valves in some sort of location up front here. But that's kind of the layout for the tray. That's kind of how I manage it. So first things I'll put on there are the uh, valve holders. We're going to put our fuel filters, our Swewin fuel filters on there as well too. And we've got these uh, fancy little uh, fuel filter holders 
that Joe did up for me. And we're gonna incorporate those as well. So working on this, getting this plate laid out, and uh, that's kind of the next step because we need to run all this stuff forward. All right, guys, and there is the startup plate. So we've got our on-off valves. Uh, these printed holders are available on the lighter side of RC. We've got our two air systems, and then we've got our holes here for our filler lines, which are gonna go to the UATs. Now, these are some of the items we're going to be adding to the website very soon. This is a through-haul fitting, like a six millimeter or a Tigon line. And uh, just drill the hole there, and we'll just CA those in place. And they're a beautiful way to finish off those holes. And then the smaller Tigon line fits right through that, and we'll have a fuel dot in the end. And that is what we're looking like. There is what it's gonna look like installed. So really, really clean. I'm very happy with this. The only thing we need to add on there is the fuel filters, which we'll just add in this area most likely. So anyways, happy. All right, guys, and there is the finished product. I tell you, I'm really actually digging this black goop that I found. Uh, I didn't, I've never seen it before, didn't know it existed. Um, I got it a while ago and I really like it, especially for things like this where you're gluing these filter holders down. It just is a nice clean look. So, so that is the finished, uh, finished product. So we're going to let that cure overnight and uh, those filter holders will be stuck in place and looks amazing, I think. All right, so next thing we're gonna do before we get this tray installed is we've gotta uh, plumb all the lines. So we have a couple things to do here. We've got the lines that are coming from the turbines, which we are gonna feed up through uh, probably the middle of the tanks, and those will come here and then split off. So we have to put a hole right here, and probably gonna do one larger hole with the lines just coming out, so they're easy to feed through. And then we've got to put our line in between right here. And then we've got to figure out what we're doing with the lines coming this way. So I'm going to kind of get that figured out. And then when we flip this over, we've got our airline systems that we need to put together. So basically what we're going to do here is we're just going to use the T's and uh, do something like this. And then we'll have the airlines both going forward. Uh, which will go into the air systems itself, but at least we've got uh, the, the lines run essentially and we won't need any more access to this area. All right, so startup plate is all done. So we added the through fittings at the back here, the pipes go through and to the center. We added the through fittings up front here. Uh, our fill lines, which are going to have fuel dots in them because that's just the way they're going to work best. And when they're actually connected and everything, they're going to sit down like that. So, looks really, really good. And if you look at this side, it's quite the mess of wires. I always love that when I see that. The big mound mess craziness of wires and tubes and all that kind of stuff. So the important thing here, and you can see, is we've tried to keep everything close to the center as possible because we have to stick those two tanks back there and uh, everything is really, really well run. So next thing we're gonna do is we are going to put the fuel lines and vent line on the tanks before we put them in because these are smooth tubes. You want to tie wire these or safety wire those. So we're going to put our tubes on there. And then once the tubes are installed in the tank, we'll actually put the tank in the airframe, put a drop of either silicone or shoe goop on each tank to hold them in place. And the back half of the aircraft is done at that point and we are ready to bolt on the nose. All right, so other next thing we need to think about is our airline connectors on this end. So um, normally you would just think, okay, we'll run a line this way, we'll run a line from the other side and start going forward. But a cleaner way to do things is if you have your one line coming in, your other line coming in, you have a T 
connecting those two lines and then you have a single line coming back that's going to make things much easier uh, you want to make sure that your tubes are cut to the same length so you have a whatever it is a seven inch tube this way a seven inch tube that way and that's going to make the gear system work uh, more in tune with each other and uh, so that's how i'm setting this up as well too so Fortunately for our wings, we've got the layout written out here. So white is lock, gray is unlock, black is brake, blue is gear down, red is gear up. So when I come here to the wings, each of the wings has been completed in that manner. So we've got the other end of our connectors all done up, ready to go. And we can just pull those off one at a time, connect them to our tubes and very, very simple. All right, so there is a finished uh, connection of what I was just talking about there. So we've got both wings here. We've got the main blue line, which is going to be coming forward. And now what I'll do is I will get that uh, fed in there and install both ends going out. Now I'm going to probably separate these things um, in by, by groups or systems. So I've talked about systems before. So we've got all of our electrical system coming down this side. Probably going to run all of the air systems on this side and fuel we'll have to figure that out. I'm probably going to keep them separate just so we can uh, keep things nice and clear as to which is which. But uh, air, air I'm going to start to feed on this side over here. Alright guys, so with the way this is designed it works out better if the excess uh, wing connections here go into the fuselage because the wing side is fairly stiff with length so it's going to be uh, Easier if we just open up this uh, this hole to be uh, larger where the uh, all the connectors here can fit in So I'm going to use my Dremel and just uh, hold the vacuum up there and open that up And if you take a look at the wing side here, we've got lots of room um, as far as how big we can make that hole to match the wing side but what I mean is it's just not overly easy if you try and push the excess into the wing so that's the reason we're doing it all right so we got the wing connectors here we've got the hole opened up so our uh, basically the widest piece which is the ash lock connector fits in and I have installed a clip down there in the fuselage you can see the white one right there holding all of the airlines in so one thing i'll do with these clips is they have 3m tape on them but i'll put a bit of shoe goop on them you can see it is black there and that just helps to make sure that it never moves and is always staying in place and then from our front end here i've added another one of those clips there in black instead of white and then we've got all of our air lines going to our wings. The shorter lines here, the white and the gray, are coming from our startup plate, our fill valves. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the startup plate screwed in place. And then we are ready to install our tanks. All right, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to run the line that comes from the fuel side going to the UATs because we want to put that on before we install the tanks in the fuselage. Now as far as distance goes, that's where the standard UAT mounting is. The plates actually have the cutouts for the UATs. There's a bit of a different view there for you. So basically we just need to make sure we have enough tubing to come roughly from here to this part of the fuselage and then from here to the tanks. So to keep it simple we've got about one hand width and then if we look in there way too much so if we go a hand open and a hand closed that'll be enough tubing. Do you like my archaic measurement tool? So what we'll do is we'll just cut that amount in the 6mm tubing. I'm leaving it long just because we're going to have to cut it anyways. And uh, we're going to attach one of these to each of those tanks on the fuel side. Alright, so there we have one of the tanks installed. You can see the two sets of safety wire that I install on those. So the reason I use two on a tank set up like this is because there's no barbs or nipples or anything on these 
tubes. So we've used two rounds of safety wire there and we've done one at the top, one at the side so there any sort of pressure points are not in the exact same spot. So we're not gonna put the vent line on yet because we do have decent access to that area. So we're gonna slip the other tank in. So you can see we've slipped the one in and now we just gotta push all the tubes and everything over when we slip the second one in and that will be good. The only, only thing we need to think about after the fact once we get those tanks in is we gotta make sure we have enough of the fill line uh, coming up and then just tucking down in there once we uh, once we have the tanks installed, just so we have access to fill the tanks. So we're gonna slip the other one in and see how it all fits. All right, so that looks like it's gonna work out very well. Uh, the only thing that we have to still attach to the tanks here is the vent fittings. Now the vent fittings, we're actually gonna have those come straight down and we're gonna put our two vent fittings on the bottom of the fuselage right in that area. So when you put the wings on, the wings actually are all the way back here and they only come to this area. So if we have our vent fittings right there, we can put our tanks sitting on top of the wings and plug our overflow tanks right into the vent fittings down there. All right guys, and that is everything for this episode. Next episode, we will uh, secure these uh, tanks finally put our vent fittings in, clean this area up, and we will be bolting the front of the fuselage onto this aircraft. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel because you don't want to miss us putting the front of this uh, fuselage on and uh, the plane almost doubles in length. It's pretty nuts. So um, if you guys have watched the entire episode, make sure you comment down below as far as your thoughts on those questions that I asked. I appreciate any feedback and I appreciate you guys for watching and supporting the channel. So thank you so much for doing so. Uh, again, give the video a thumbs up guys. Hit that subscribe button down below if you have not done so. And uh, we'll see you in the next episode of the A10 build. Thanks for watching.